Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at our next helicopter skill, and that's going to be hovering. Now when people think of hovering, I always like to make the same joke, it's all about covering a lot of ground. <laughs> no, really. Hovering is extremely, extremely challenging. You know, for those of you who are operating on something that doesn't have pedals down on the floor by your feet right now, it's going to be challenging, but Microsoft does offer a lot of assistance options to help kind of take some of the pain out of hovering. It's just a matter of kind of playing with it. So how do you learn to hover? Well, the trick here is, and I will say this a million times, it's all about learning not to hover to hover. And you're like, what? Well, believe it or not, it's possible to hold the helicopter at zero airspeed zero ground speed. They're two different concepts. And most people, when they think of a hover, they think of zero ground speed, even though you could have airspeed or vice versa. So it actually creates an interesting scenario. So when you're learning to hover, uh, this is the general tip that I recommend to do. So what I do is I grab my weather. I come up to my weather control here. You can see I've got myself some wind. I'm gonna grab that mean ground level. Mean, it's mean, I tell you it's mean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wind speed and I'm gonna crank it up to 10 knots. Now you're sitting there going, why would you do that? You're making it difficult for yourself. No, 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 no. I'm not making it difficult for myself. I'm making it easy for myself. And you're saying, but it's 10 knots of wind. That's a lot of speed. Yes, it is. However, we know that that wind is coming out of the west. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do the same thing we did last time. Go ahead and get this thing hovering up a little bit. We're going to get nice and light. Remember, when that wind is behind you, it's going to have a tendency to make you go into a bit of a tailspin here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my helicopter, and I'm just going to pre wet Whoops. Watch out under your controls, by the way, that you don't accidentally hit the button. And we're just going to bring ourselves into the west. Now, why am I facing west? Well, remember that wind that's 10 knots right now? That wind that's 10 knots is holding us in place. It's a secret. Nobody needs to know. So what I've done here is I've created myself a scenario. One of the harder parts of controlling my hover here is not going forward and backwards because I've essentially isolated the part of the helicopter that is now going in that direction. So now my concentration here can be just on trying to hold it steady. So when you're learning to hover, now that I have that 10 knot wind, I'm basically frozen in place here. By the way, this is fantastically hard for me to do and talk at the same time. So what you want to do when you're learning is you see that little object over in the distance. Yeah, the one I'm looking at that's dancing at me right now. Don't pick that as your primary target. So what you want to do is you want to pick something that's both close and it's both far away at the same time. So if you take a look, I've got some of those uh, taxi signs over there on my side. What you can do is you can use them as reference points. So the trick here is, again, I got a little bit of right foot. I'm not touching the collective here. Notice how we're starting to climb a little bit and we're sinking a little bit. A lot of that has to do with entering ground effect and exiting it. On the real helicopter, it is just as twitchy. So what I'm doing is I'm just using those handy dandy lights to go ahead and observe. Now, one of the downsides here is every time you make a change in power, again, I'm not even touching my collective right now, you're going to affect the lift of the blade. For example, if I tip the blade forward, we come forward, but do you notice how we sink as well? So as you're starting to work on the scale, concentrate on just one aspect of it at a time. Now, some of you are saying, what would happen if you wanted to have that wind to your side? Well, let's go ahead and pre-wet to the right here. Now watch how much more challenging my hover becomes. Notice my helicopter is now sinking. And also notice my helicopter just bounced off the ground as a demonstration. Because we don't have all that extra lift that we just had a second ago, we now have a new challenge. We have to now balance the fact that the helicopter is now moving to the left at the same time as the helicopter still needs to stay stable. So now as I'm trying to learn my lift uh, hovering skill, I have to be able to keep track of both of those forces at the same time, which is why when you're first learning, you always want to go ahead and do it into the wind. It makes it easy. Now, if you want a nightmare difficulty here, and what we can do is we can actually flip ourselves all the way around, and we can make it so the wind is behind us. Now, the wind is just like if you're trying to do a landing with a tailwind. You can see how hard it is for me to catch up. This is what happens when you try to explain and fly. We are now fighting the weather vane effect, which is making it very, 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 very challenging to keep a steady hover. Also, notice we're getting kind of blown downwind here. This is a fantastically challenging. Look at how high up we just got, just like it's not even looking that we kind of bounced like that and we're kind of hanging out. Whoa, I gotta concentrate on what I'm doing. So you can see how tricky that is. So let's go ahead and settle the helicopter here. And I'll show you where you wanna go next. It'll probably take, oh, ouch. Um, it'll probably take you 20, 30 hours to get comfortable with hovering, especially if you don't have sensitive controls. But like I said, we have some built-in stuff. So once you feel comfortable with that, now my right leg is like shaking, bring in the gusts. 
So what I like to do is I like to make it nice and challenging. I'll go ahead and bring the gust about half of what we have here. So we have 10 knots of gust, but they're all from the same direction. If you're a horrible human being, you can do something like that and make the gust now at an angle to you. So now when you get to this moment where you're comfortable and you can lock onto that point in the horizon that's not moving, please, you now have the ability to make it a little more challenging. So now watch what happens. So let's go ahead and I'll bring it. Remember, we've already done our hover test here. So we'll go ahead and I'll bring the helicopter up. And notice we are going all over the place here. A little bit of right foot. And let's go point to the wind. So now we have the wind challenging. So not only is the wind 10 knots to our face, the wind is now 10 knots to the side. So when you move to this phase, if you're hovering, you have to realize that it's just like a regular airplane. You can only do what you have with what you have. So you can see I'm holding it perfectly steady there, despite that 10 knot wind. You just want to find that thing and just concentrate over there on the horizon and just kind of relax. Now, the great thing about hovers is that when you're done with the hover, of course, we have to go put the hover away. So the reason why we practice the hover is the next skill here is it's always going to be about setting yourself up for a landing. Now, one of the things I don't have going here today, which you probably have observed, is I don't have track IR. These helicopters are fantastically hard to fly without being able to move your head. Again, I'm afraid to touch anything. But the advantage to all this is when I do go to practice my landing skill a little later on, that hover is what you're going to need to hold a few inches off the ground to settle the helicopter into the ground safely. And there we have it. So as you can see, that skill is going to take a really long time, and I'm still learning this helicopter. And, you know, most of my experience is on the Robinson 22, as well as things like, you know, the Apache and stuff like that over in DCS. In the real world, I've only got to fly Robinson, and man, is it touchy. So what we're going to take a look at next time is how to get the thing airborne and just kind of general maneuvers. Enjoy.